Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 263, Pro, Raw, Raw. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I am Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Good day to you, sir. It is good to see your smiling mustache. Yes, yes. It uh, always cheers me up in the morning. <laughs> uh, well, we have got all kinds of goodies to talk about today. Let's start off with some follow-up. I might still sound a little winded because, as I said last week, Apple Fitness Plus is coming out. <laughs> and I, being very lazy, did not get around to doing it till just before we uh, got on to record the podcast. So, uh, initial thoughts, I did one 10 minute core workout while my daughter was trying to climb on me. So I got a little extra, extra high intensity training there. Uh, but going into the app now, reminder, Apple Fitness Plus is their new subscription service that works with Apple Watch and then your iPhone, your iPad or your Apple TV. I don't know if it's on the computer yet, uh, but I hooked it up to my Apple TV. You connect to your watch. And this is in the latest iOS 14.3 and whatever tvOS. So make sure you're updated. Whew, I got to take a breather. I'm telling you, my core, is, core yeah. is feeling it. Well, I have while you're breathing, what's a computer? You're like, it's not on the computer. What's a computer? <laughs> yes, All those true. other things are computers. Yes, very true. But it is a great interface. They've got a ton of different categories. If you've got a treadmill, if you've got a uh, exercise bike, whatever it is, they have different workouts and they have core, yoga, dance. We talked through a bunch of it. They've got a bunch of different trainers, this beautiful, of course, it's Apple doing video, this beautiful studio. And uh, so the core workout, I kind of scrolled through them, picked it. 10 minutes long, they have like 10 minute and 20 minute for some of the categories. And then some like the rower or the exercise bike might, they have some that go up to like 45 minutes. Um, but the trainer, super energetic, really walks you through it, welcomes you in. They have different music selections. I think this is really gonna be a success. I mean, for me, the 10, mi 10 minutes went by really quick. They have, so they have three different trainers or three different people doing the workout on their yoga mats or whatever it is, but they're doing it at different intensities. So the main hmm. trainer, he's going for it. And then they have one where, you know, doing some things on your hands and knees and she's kind of keeping her foot on the ground for more balance. So there's different levels, but it is super, super approachable. And uh, I, with my new Apple Watch, I get a three month free trial of the Fitness Plus. It's part of the Apple One bundles. Uh, and then I don't know if you can get like a free one month trial if you just have a, another Apple Watch. Have you looked at that, Dave? I, I haven't seen any free trials anywhere for that. It's just, I think you can maybe do Apple One, <clears throat> which includes it as a free trial, but not just the Fitness Plus individually. Okay. But I do have a couple questions. Okay. Can two persons do this at the same time using two Apple watches, like on an Apple TV, for example? So could my wife and I both be training to the same video at the same time? From what I understand, one Apple watch currently, and I mean, this just came out, currently one Apple watch can be synced to the TV at the same time. So what it does is it shows you up on the screen how far you are into the workout mm -hmm. and uh, how many calories you burnt and your heart rate right on the screen. So you're what you could be connected to the TV and then your wife could be doing it as a workout on her Apple watch. I do know that you can, if you have like multiple profiles on your Apple TV, um, you could each be doing your own, you can both connect, but I don't think you can connect at the same time right yeah. now, which I'm sure is coming because that would be very helpful. Well, in typical Apple. Yes. View, yeah, I shouldn't say I'm view. sure it's coming. We don't have multi-users on iPad yet, which right. is a 
major beef in my opinion. Yeah. I think they're like, oh, well, the other person can buy another Apple TV and another television <laughs> set yeah. and be in the same room with you with two TVs, but we're just, you know, the vertical one person, one device, one experience. Yeah. You could both have your phones next to each other and hope you pre start the workouts at the same time so you can follow along. And my second question was, regarding the music so you can choose the type of music how does that work if it's do they have a different session that they show you yeah so they have different i think so like for core 10 minute core workouts there was three or four and this is the first week they're going to be adding new workouts every week but there was one that was like upbeat hits and then pop and rock so i think you just kind of pick and you can sort when you're looking through the workouts you can sort them by musical style i was kind of under the understanding that you could do something where you change the music but the trainer was actually discussing the music he's like oh joe jonas is going to get us started with this one hmm. on the one i was doing because i did they probably uh, record it with all the different music yeah. and then whichever one you choose that's the one that plays yeah so it does does have some features, which is nice because if you you know want rock more than pop or something, you can do that. Um, but you know they've got Apple Music, so they're tying tying all of that in. But I, after one workout, uh, I really want to get motivated to find time to do these. And when it is just a ten minute, if I can't find ten minutes a day to do some exercise, uh, I've got bigger you, problems yeah what are you doing with your life yes yeah so i really i really do want to make it uh, a focus um i did want to mention a couple other things in ios 14.3 that were released uh support for the airpods max pro raw support for the new iphone 12 cameras uh mm. so it says to the iphone 12 and the iphone 12 pro max but not the iphone 12 pro I think that's a typo there, Mac mm -hmm. rumors. Uh, but the Pro Raw professional photographers use often use raw format to take their photos. It stores a lot more data. It doesn't do the processing. We quickly take photos and we hope that Apple makes good decisions on how it should look when it's done and gives us a JPEG. Well, Apple has built their own raw system. And from what I hear, I played around with a little bit, but again, I'm not a professional photographer, um, but I saw some pretty amazing photos. There was one where it was uh, like some mountains at dusk and they were completely dark and the sky was a little, little bit in the, just the photo, you could not see a single detail of the mountains, the raw pro raw photo, uh, my cheerleading coming out there. Um, <laughs> I was not a cheerleader, although my father was. But then they went, took it into a photo editing program and were able to bring out all of the details, like the city below these mountains. You couldn't even see a lick of it in the original photo, but the, there was mm -hmm. so much data there. So if you're really into photos, this Pro Raw looks to be amazing. It stores a lot of extra data than a standard Raw, a lot of Apple's magic in there. Mm -hmm. Now, one caveat. 25 megabytes per photo is what they estimate versus yeah. 3.5 yeah. or whatever <laughs> and even smaller with the uh the heic format where it's like two megabytes for a, a regular photo so it's not something you want to have on all the time but if you have an iphone 12 you can go into the settings turn it on and then it provides you with a toggle in the camera app so unlike last year, when we had to go into the settings to change every single setting on photos, um, there is an Apple Pro Raw, uh, Pro Raw, Pro Raw, Pro Raw. Uh, hey, well, I was just going to mention that I've noticed that when I take photos sometimes, usually when it's like in a darker lit setting, I don't know if yes. it's the, uh, the dark magic, <laughs> not the dark magic, the magic <laughs> Apple does magic. For, for dark photos. But I get a flash of the photo. It seems unprocessed, really grainy and weird. And then it snaps into what oh, Apple, yes. Uh, yes. the decisions that Apple makes. So I don't know what's going on there, but it's interesting. I think it's a little bug, but it gives you kind of a behind the scenes of what the actual photo looks like. And then a split second later, it yeah. resolves itself. Yeah. And they're doing so much so fast on the camera, but it is interesting to see 
just what they are doing with it. Uh, another feature I saw, Siri Sounds. My daughter and I were checking this one out this morning, and you can ask questions like, what does a humpback whale sound like? Or what does a lion sound like? And Siri will bring it up and automatically play you the sound. So we were checking out some animal sounds and fire truck sounds. And uh, so they've got vehicles, animals, uh, musical instruments. Uh, so I don't know how functional that is, but one of those cool little features if you forget what a trumpet sounds like. Every time I hear the word humpback, I'm reminded of Star Trek for the voyage of the voyage home where they had to go mm, back and get Aren't we uh, all? Aren't <laughs> we all? Doesn't that bring it to everybody? And yes. one of the best lines in that film is uh, Captain Kirk says to Scotty, Scotty, we're looking for some humpbacks. And Scotty goes, people? No, Wells, <laughs> Mr. Scott. Anyway, it's great. Look it up. Classic, classic. Uh, so the other features, some home screen shortcuts got easier if you're using those like to do certain things. Uh, the, the TV app got some improvements, cardio fitness, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, but the biggest ones were the Pro Raw and then the Apple Fitness. So, um, but you also found that iOS 12.5 was released, which you might be going, who cares? We're on iOS 14, but for older devices that don't mm -hmm. support iOS 14, they got an update for the exposure notifications for the uh, COVID tracking app, if that's available in your locale. Yeah, and I'll add to this. Um, very great that Apple and Google are supporting older devices. Well, at least Apple in this case, uh, yes. for exposure notification, if only our local and state municipalities would turn it on. I'm calling you out, Governor Brown of Oregon. Turn on the stupid software so we can use it. Washington and California both have it, so that's all well, I'm saying. And I will remind people, we are the most nonpartisan tech podcast on the internet, but... Health uh, and safety yes. is not partisan. That's all I got to say. <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> It shouldn't be partisan. <laughs> uh, the next piece of follow-up is actually follow-up from a text message conversation I had with Todd, friend of the show, uh, which I was on a recent Mark and Todd cast. I'll link to that in the show notes. I was a co-host. I don't know if I, yeah, I mentioned listened to that, that before. I listened to that. Yeah, it was, a it was very fun. Good show. I did and ended up, ended up talking some technology on there, of course. Um, but one of the things, and we might have discussed this, he pays a rental fee every month for his internet service for the router. So he was asking me about that. And I know we talked about it way back on the podcast. And the law banning rental fees for customer owned routers takes effect Sunday. What today? So uh, yes, as we record, as we record. So as you listen to this, it is in effect. Now, Ziply, my uh, internet provider, a couple months ago, when I switched over to my new high speed they allowed me to take it off then so this law actually passed six months ago but um they granted the fcc granted a six month delay to isps claiming that providers needed more time to comply because of the coronavirus pandemic which i call they needed more yeah dollars. they wanted to make a little they wanted to make six months more money so if you have internet at your home, which hopefully you do, and you have a router. Now, if you already have your own router and they're charging you a fee, that can go away. And if you are renting their router for usually about 10 bucks a month, you can get your own and they're about 60 bucks for a decent one. And it depends on your provider, which one will work, but you can find them on Amazon really easily. And so after six months, you've, you know, in the rental fees, you've paid it off. And then after that, you're in the clear. So I highly recommend uh, getting that straightened out and trying to save money with your ISPs, as we often talk about, because they try to get you any way they can. So this is a ban. So they can't even give you the option of renting their fees the, or their route. If you're fees. renting their device, <laughs> they can charge you. But before, they could charge you even if you were using your own device. Well, that is device. ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> the definite you look up isp in the internet and ridiculous <laughs> is often found oh, okay man. well thanks for clearing that up yes and speaking of ridiculous we've talked about in-app purchases and parenting and knowing what your kids are doing on their devices several times well a kid run ran up a sixteen thousand with a thou bill in 
Sonic Rings. So he was playing the Sonic game on his iPad, I believe, and his parents had it set up somehow that he could do in-app purchases whenever he wanted. He didn't realize he was spending real money. His mom didn't notice for months that thousands of dollars were being rung up on her credit card. It, it, there's a little bit of, um, I mean, I don't want to shame her, but if I was getting, you know, if there was an extra thousand or two on my credit card, I am in a place in my life where I am going to notice. Uh, so it, it's this big back and forth where she kept contacting Chase, her credit card, and they said it looks like fraud. And then they finally got back and said, nope, these are real purchases. So then she found out it was through Apple. And then she contacted Apple and they said, well, it's too late. It's been 60 days. You know, we can't refund you for this. So I hopefully it'll work out some, but there was a lot of uh, fluff in the story and extra stuff. So it's just a great reminder, parents, for one, for everyone, pro tip, pay attention to your credit card bill. Two, parents, make sure you have the parental controls and all of that stuff set up so that your kids aren't able to do that, know which games they're playing, teach them about how money works. I'm working with my four and a half year old daughter on how money works because she wants every app and every extension in every app. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this was kind of a, a unique story. We used to hear more about this, but they've got better systems in place. But how you get to $16,000 before you kind of realize what's going on, that's the part that's a little suspect to me. Yeah, I don't I don't want this family to have to pay that money because I know that's yeah. would yes. probably be devastating for most families. But at the same time, it's kind of their fault or it is their yes. fault. There's there's actually no question. It it is their fault. Um and I'm just trying to think of a like a real world example. Um I don't know, your toddler is in a clothing a high-end clothing store and is uh, using marker on a bunch of thousand dollar dresses. Uh, do you go, oh no, I didn't know my kid had a marker and was, I mean, yes. the, since it's digital, it's hard to argue that there are real world compensation that needs to take place because it's all digital goods and services. Yes. I mean, what is the value of a digital good? It's just whatever we apply to it. Mm. Um, so it's not exactly a one-to-one, -one, but I mean, it kind of is their fault. I suppose if I were Apple, I'd probably say, you know what, we're going to split it 50-50. You still owe 8,000. Uh, well, here's the payment plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I am far from a perfect parent, but it's just a good reminder of one of those things that you want to make sure you're paying attention to. Yeah. Um, well, Facebook, we were talking about the, you know, antitrust lawsuit. Well, they've also, uh, are now attacking Apple. They are now also attacking Apple. They took out, uh, one or two full page ads in the New York times, um, attacking Apple's iOS privacy changes. So one of the new things coming to iOS is these nutrition labels of what you know, the privacy that you're agreeing to um, and tracking between apps and websites and just some of this stuff that uh, Apple is always trying to be on the forefront of just giving you the options on privacy and knowing what you're opting into. That's mm -hmm. the big thing. Uh, so Facebook, and I read some pretty good takes. John Gruber uh, over at Daring Fireball, he had a pretty good run through of a couple of the different articles on it and just talking about, you know, because Facebook's coming at it from the, hey, this is going to kill small businesses because they need this super targeted advertising. But it really boils down to you now have the option to opt into that targeted advertising. Now, me personally, I am all for it. I would rather see more targeted ads. I would rather see something that I'm more likely to buy. My bank account wouldn't, uh, but <laughs> it's it's for me. But I know for some people, you and I are very different on our mm -hmm. Facebook <laughs> perspectives and what they do. And I think I personally think that they've gotten a little a lot better. They've been forced to get a lot better. They would like to not do that. They would like to, you know, get as much information and sell it to as many people as possible. Um, but they, Gruber also uh, noted a 2010, the 
uh, Apple founder and former genius. And it says a quote from that that I want to read. Privacy means people know what they're signing up for in plain English and repeatedly. That's what it means. I'm an optimist. I believe people are smart. And some people want to share more data than other people do. Ask them. Ask them every time. Make them tell you to stop asking them if they get tired of you asking them. Let them precisely, let them know precisely what you're going to do with their data. That's what we think. Um, so I, I really, I thought that was a, a good perspective from 10 years ago and oh, how things have changed since then. Yeah, my take on this, and it's not a unique take, I've heard it around uh, different shows and stuff, is that th this is a, uh, this is a propaganda campaign by Facebook to kind of uh, spin the message. So from my perspective, what it really is, is Facebook is mad that they're, that Apple is informing people about where their data is being used. Facebook does not want people to know what data they're collecting and how it's going to be used. And so that is the reality. I mean, there's really no other way to look at this, they're spinning it. This is going to damage small businesses, et cetera, et cetera. What it's really going to do is damage Facebook's ability to monetize that data because there are going to be people who choose not to share that information. And so yeah. it's just a ploy by them to prevent people from shutting down their tentacles into people's lives. And so I don't like that they put this in the paper and that they're spinning it this way because it's really it's not sincere it's inaccurate and it feels like they're just trying to deceive people uh into giving up their privacy and i don't like the take yeah yeah and i also saw that facebook uh this week is joining in with Fortnite on some of their stuff so they're going after apple but um i do there was discussing with todd in the facebook group uh, not nerd Facebook group about just, you know, what apps have access to everything. And Apple has done so much work to uh, like that Steve Jobs quote, really give you some transparency on what that data is doing. I just had my August door lock. It popped up a notification today saying, August has been using location data in your background for the last eight days. Do you want to turn this off or always allow? And it's like, well, that's my door lock. It locks when I leave the house, locks when I get home. That's one that I want. And mm -hmm. I'm going to trust August until I need to know otherwise. But that kind of visibility is, it's really great. It helps educate us on what all this stuff is that's going on. Well, Epic and Fortnite feel like they're uh, engaging in corporate warfare against Apple. And yeah. all of the people who use these services are the casualties of war, is all I got to say. Yeah, true. And I did want to mention, we talked about the antitrust lawsuit against Facebook last week. Google is facing another law antitrust lawsuit, looks like from 30 states. Uh, so we'll be seeing plenty more on that. Um, mostly Google, Facebook, possibly Amazon and Apple with some stuff, but that's what we know on that so far. And yeah. Yeah, I think we're moving into an era of, it used to, there were startups where everybody could do everything they wanted. These companies got mature. They became these behemoths that were, you know, spending $27 billion on various things. They just have so much money, so much invasion of privacy, so much data. It feels like we're kind of moving into the third era where the country and the constituents of the country are kind of waking up to these things yeah and there's going to start being more and more legislation uh people turning some of these services off and you know i, I feel like there's the big culling is coming yes. for some of these services and it's yeah. about time yeah it's been the been the wild west and it's time to rein it in a bit well speaking of not reining it in wise I don't know how you and I miss this one, Dave. I've been getting emails from uh, our friends over at Wise with all these products they've released kind of on their timelines of when stuff's going to get out. Well, I I don't think we talked about it on the podcast or that I knew about it, but they have $50 noise-canceling headphones. Mm -hmm. Now, we were just talking about the AirPods Max last week, last week at $550. Uh, I've watched some reviews on them. 
people say the industrial design is amazing, the sound is great, but for me, $550 does not sound great. So why is coming in at 50 bucks, again, worth a try? I mean, mm -hmm. this they look very nice. They're not gonna be as good as the AirPods Max, but they're also $500 cheaper. So you could buy 11 <laughs> pairs and really get a lot of sound out of these ones. Yeah, you can have a, a pair for every day of the week and uh, a couple for leap year and holidays. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes. yeah, I they, I, also, I... they also release an outdoor plug too. <laughs> but we, yeah. Geez, they, can, they don't stop. I pre-ordered that outdoor plug because I what what I'm going for, the reason I order some of these wonky things that they uh, are doing, and I also, uh, the, the doorbell, the $30 oh, yeah. doorbell thing is yeah. on pre-order. I think we talked about that before. I'm wanting to get most of my smart devices on the Wise, uh, the Wise train so that I can have one app that rules them all and they work with Alexa. So it's great. So I can use my voice to do a yeah. lot of these things, but the outdoor plug I'm re renovating my backyard and I'm going to have some string lights go across there. Oh yeah. And so I'm going to plug it into this wise plug and have it turn it on and off. Now I have other smart plugs that work with Alexa, but I want to be able to, to use my wise app to control that stuff. So yeah. and uh, an outdoor one with waterproof and yeah. Yeah. So look forward to 2021, the year of all wise picks of the week for me mm -hmm. and Dave. Man, I imagine me getting rid of all technology in my house unless it has a wise logo on it. <laughs> yes. A wise yes. computer. Where, when's that a coming? A wise computer. The wise coming phone. soon. <laughs> yes. Oh, so many, so many devices. I, I think I might stick with Apple for a few things, but uh, wise <laughs> is going to definitely have a place in my home coming up. And you know what always has a place in my life? Dave's pro tip of the week. So this week, I'm going to focus on our smartphones. And some of these features work with Android devices, but this one is specifically tailored to the iPhone. And it's a wonderful assistant, Siri. Um, Nate, what does Siri call you? If, if you say, um, hey, Siri, what is my name? What do you think it will say? Uh, I just asked Siri and she says, you're Nate. That's what you told me anyways. Yeah. Here, let me, let me do mine here. Hey Siri, what is my name? You're David. That's what you told me anyway. Yeah. So you're David. That's what you told me anyway. Well, did you know Nate? And maybe you did and others did too. You can have her address you as anything you want. And it's mm. very simple. And so you just activate Siri and I'm going to do it by pushing the side button on my phone. And I'm going to say, Siri, call me, and then I'm going to say something. So let's see what happens. Call me Tech Lord. You would like me to call you Tech Lord? Yes. So, hey, Nate, why don't I have you try to do it on your phone? And be sure to put the little microphone up to your speaker so we can hear what she says. Call me Nerd. You would like me to call you Nerd? Yes. And just like that, Siri will call you nerd when you say, what's my name? And so this works when people are texting you and you have your headset in and it'll, it can say, uh, hey, David, there's an incoming message from your wife or whatever. Um, you can, it now will, thinks your name is whatever you told it. So that's just a little trick to personalize your device. And you can tell uh, Siri other things with your voice. You can say, and for my example, uh, hey, Siri, Valerie is my wife. Which Valerie? Valerie Baylor. Okay, but I already know that. <laughs> she already knew that. But you can set up relationships in your phone. And so you can say, instead of uh, text Valerie this, it'll say, well, which Valerie did you want? Because I have more than one Valerie in my, my phone book. If I say instead, text my wife this, she knows who my wife is, and she will receive the message. You can do it for a son, a daughter, a brother, an uncle, a mom, a dad. Uh, so don't be afraid to use Siri to kind of customize who she calls you and what your uh, family members are by their type so that it's easier to send uh, voice messages and text messages using Siri.
Very nice. I like it. Well, let's move on to our takes of the week. Uh, we'll let you know news is slowing down a little bit. Uh, the holiday season is upon us, whatever that looks like this year. Uh, but I did find some stories. This first one was interesting, and I think we could all use a little more of this in our life. Twitter uses machine machine learning to show you funnier tweets well they just so, need to su subscribe you to my channel my tweet yes. feed, and then you get the funny ones your tweet feed yes <laughs> uh so what they're doing they have under the um so they have under the topics feature they have uh funny tweets and viral tweets and they're going to start using algorithms for ones that you like or retweet or interact with click on uh, they're going to show you more that are based on what you seem to like so uh, I, d I don't use the topics feature i very rarely use the trending feature in Twitter. Um, I should spend a lot less time on Twitter, but uh, I, you know, one of those things that they're they're trying out and uh, get more get more viral viral funny content on Twitter. How are, how do they? Learning. Who's determining what's funny and what is not funny? Well, I think it, originally it's based on likes, and then the ones that you like more, it'll show you more that are similar, use some algorithm to show you similar funny stuff. Mm, it's probably looking for some keywords. Yes. Uh, and it's probably most likely eliminating tweets that have certain words in it that are negative. It's eliminating yeah. all those. So who knows? This will be yeah. interesting. I'll try it out. Um, I have a very refined taste in humor, so I'm not mm, sure yes. <laughs> I will find any of these things funny or not. Yes, Mr. Highbrow, we call you. Mm -hmm. uh, well, some bad news possibly for you, Dave. Our friends over at DJI and me also, I have their Osmo Pocket device, but they're most famous for their drones. They have been placed on the U.S. Department of Commerce entity list. And so what this entity list is, is ones that, you know, we should be aware of and concerned about. And now it's not about the security and privacy issues that we've talked about. It's actually about human rights abuses uh, and some of the stuff going on in China. So um, it's pretty interesting. It's kind of a, a different perspective because there has been concerns with them in the past and ties to the Chinese government. Um, but, you know, human rights and everything. Yeah. And I'm not too worried about it. I mean, there are other drone manufacturers out there. There's I, my primary uh, high level professional drone that I use is uh, the Anafi Parrot uh, or yeah, the Anafi by Parrot, uh, which is a French company. So I don't see them getting under this uh, yeah. watchful eye of the U.S. government anytime soon. And then, of course, Skydio is kind of an up-and-comer. They have a lot of professional drones oh, yeah. that rival um, DJI's products. So I was actually contemplating maybe getting a Skydio, Skydio drone the next time I make a purchase, although I really want some of the lesser expensive DJI products, the Mini and the Air mm -hmm. uh, that they have. And I mean, they're three or $400. Uh, I think the Air comes in about seven or eight hundred dollars but at those prices it's and they perform so well yeah. it's hard not to want to get the dga pro the dji products but there are alternatives and um i'm not too worried about it yes yeah so and it is uh just a more of a watch list and again kind of goes back to the facebook and google stuff where it's like we've had this wide open everything and we're just paying attention to stuff a little more so if there is stuff going on with them hopefully they can get that worked out and mm -hmm. uh then won't be a problem moving forward because i'm sure they still want to be able to sell stuff here in the u.s i'm sure they do and this does not mean that that will necessarily be going away just that uh they're they're being watched uh we've we've talked I believe that Apple purchased Shazam, the app where you can identify songs, which I was thinking uh, with a lot of us not being in places where random music is playing too often right now, um, that might not be using Shazam too much, but they've completely rebuilt the Shazam iOS app, made it look more like Apple Music and kind of put their touch on it. And they've launched a version on the web, which I don't know when 
I just in my mind, I don't know when you would use that, but Shazam is a very cool service to mm -hmm. identify music and uh, they're motivated because they'll try to push you towards Apple Music, which uh, then you could subscribe to. But just wanted to let people know if you want to go check out the new Shazam app. Very cool. And in news that is uh, should have happened 10 years ago, Adobe to block Flash January hmm. 12th, 2021. So... Adobe's Flash, most of the web was built on it for a while. It was horrible security-wise, horrible resource-wise, horrible just about every-wise, and uh, not not our friends at Wise, the products. No. <laughs> the, uh, the normal spelling, the English spelling, not the tech startup spelling. Um, but yeah, so they, January 12th, 2021, uh, the date after which any type of Flash content won't run inside the Flash app. Mm. Uh, so I think it'll still, some of it will still work in browsers, but most of the time it'll throw up a warning and say, do you really want to run Flash? Uh, and there's much better technologies, HTML5 and JavaScript uh, type stuff. So this has been a long, long time coming and good riddance in my yeah. opinion. The biggest problem was it's proprietary. Yeah. Adobe owns everything about it. Two, it was a major resource hog. And then the third thing, as you pointed out, that broke the camel's back was it's an in, it's an enormous security risk. It's mm. full of holes. <laughs> it's not yeah. managed well. So it needed to go away. Now, the people who created content with Flash, there's a complete video games and all kinds yeah. of technology. And it, it really enabled a lot of cool things. But man, it's not worth the trade off. No, no. And they actually, uh, in the article over at ZDNet, so the last update, Flash's last update came out this last week. And in the change log entry, it says, we want to take a moment to thank all of our customers and developers who have used and created amazing Flash player content over the last two decades. Mm -hmm. We are proud that Flash had a crucial role in evolving web content across animation, interactivity, audio, and video. We're excited to help lead the next era of digital experiences. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a very important technology and really got us to where we are today. It just it was time for it to go. Yeah. Uh, this next story is interesting. Bandwidth limits at National Weather Service could hobble our weather apps. So the National Weather Service's data budget is hitting a ceiling and it apparently doesn't have the money to fix the situation. Now the agency is considering throttling users who access its essential forecast data. So they, they, their ISP is charging them too much and they can't afford to provide their weather data anymore. Now, we both listen to um, a lot of the shows on the Twit Network and they advertise a product that distributes their content across the web. Um, mm -hmm. Could something Cash like that- Cashfly. Yeah, Cashfly. Would something like that help so that not all of the data is coming through their ISP? and that it's being cached all around the country so that when someone seeks the information, it's coming from another server? It sure seems like it. And it sure doesn't seem, I mean, I don't, I, this seems like a weird issue for them to be running into. Who knows if it's, you know, budget or political most likely. Um, but the proposal, which is open for public comment until December 18th, lists more than 50 URLs that would be rate limited for users to 60 connections per minute. Uh, so that would be one per second if you're uh, not as good at math as I am. <laughs> Post spoke with representatives at forecasting giants like AccuWeather, private weather data services like the Commodity Weather Group and hobbyists like tropicaltidbits.com and all said that such a change could be disastrous for their respective practices. So I don't know why you would need why they wouldn't be able to use, maybe it needs to happen too quickly, a CDN like Cashfly or Cloudflare, uh, a content can, delivery network. Yes, content delivery network um, where it could spread out this data. I, I don't really understand, but yeah, so our weather might, weather forecasts might not be as good, which hmm. the weather forecasts aren't very good already. I don't, I don't know on this one, but I, Figured I'd bring it up because it's kind of interesting. Hmm. 
Uh, and not weather related, but our security and privacy story of the week. This is a huge one. Solar Winds, not weather related, is a huge enterprise and IT um, services provider. They have tons of monitoring tools, um, you know, ways for IT departments to see what's going on in their network. They had a major, major hack. Uh, now, the early reporting is was probably Russian-based, uh, and SolarWinds is installed. I think the certain service that was attacked has like 30,000 customers. Uh, I did think the headline of this article was interesting. SolarWinds hack could affect, or I saw a different one. Dang it. I did see a headline on this this week that said SolarWinds hack maybe only affected under 18,000 customers. Well, 18,000 customers is a lot when you're looking at things like the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission <laughs> um, and the U.S. Treasury and yeah. Commerce Department. <clears throat> you know, maybe when one of your customers is the U.S. government. That includes a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. So I I read through a lot of this and I will not bore you with the details, but basically they were able to hack solar winds and put some uh, a backdoor into solar wind software. So then when all these customers went and updated their software, it put in this backdoor where then malware could be installed. And we're still, it's still pretty early on, but they're trying to figure out who had access to what. Um, but this is, this is a big, a big deal. And it was a complicated thing. Um, and they've been able to stop. We've talked before where there's, um, like everything kind of gets routed one through one domain name. Well, they were able to track that down and work with GoDaddy to kind of break it. Um, the um, the emergency stop button mm -hmm. per se on on turning off a lot of it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is a big one when it involves our government, when it possibly involves the Russian government. And uh, one thing I was reading that what they probably did is. You know, if they got, let's say it's 18,000 customers, they started gathering data while they were in the system and then prioritized who were the best targets. So if it was me that has very little value for anything, uh, that got moved to the bottom of the spreadsheet when they sorted it by, you know, what they could possibly get out. But that also means that government agencies and large enterprises move to the top of the list. Uh, I think their stock was down like, I don't know, 25%, but then there was some interesting little stock trades uh, by people involved with, uh, by people involved with solar winds that some of them magically sold a bunch of stock five or six days before the breach was mm -hmm. announced. Oh, isn't that funny how that works? <laughs> it is funny how it works. And those people never seem to have any consequences. The only person who ever had a consequence for any of that stuff was Martha Stewart, who yes. maybe got a tip from somebody about some stock and then did yeah. it, but she didn't know yes. it was a bad thing or whatever. And she would like had to go to jail. <laughs> yes. Yes. But these people who who like actively rip off people and do these things it's like oh well you've got enough money i guess yeah you can't be harmed it all comes down to that classic piece of film literature aladdin disney's aladdin where the guy says you've heard about the golden rule whoever has the gold makes the rules so there mm, you go so true Oh, our bonus odd take of the week. This is a fun little project or experiment from Google. It's called the Blob Opera. And mm. uh, you can go to the website, just do a search for Blob Opera, or I'll link to it in the show notes. Uh, there are four um, possibly adorable little blobs that are the uh, four operatic ranges. <laughs> <laughs> and you can just drag them and make music. It is uh, just something fun to play around with a little bit. And uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm doing it right now. There's these weird, 
I could see your daughter loving this. Yes. So what I need somebody to do, one of our musically inclined listeners, is to take Blob Opera <laughs> and recreate the Not Nord theme song with these <laughs> four colored blobs. I don't know if you could do it, but someone please try. Yes, and you can you can drag up and down and forward and back or left to right for different ranges, and it's it's pretty impressive. So uh, definitely go check that out. And you can even there's a little Christmas tree in the lower right corner of my window. You click that on, and uh, they put on Santa hats, and then you can have them play festive songs for you. So. Hmm. Uh, and you can record it too. So you can record, send it into the podcast and we'll uh, play your creations. I'm going to be spending a lot of time with this. Yep. I can tell yes, you right it now. Is. It is very cool. And you know what else is very cool? Our picks, picks of, the week. of the week. Now, most of us out there are spending thousands of dollars putting together a gaming PC. You're buying the, <laughs> the, the case, the tower, you're buying the power supply and the graphics card and the CPU and the RAM and the hard drive and all the cables and all the LEDs and everything that you need to make pro gaming PCs, right? Do I have everybody's attention? Because yeah. what? No. Crickets? Nobody Crickets. does that? Well, I tell you who does do that is my son has been getting into building his own PC. Uh, a lot of his friends play Fortnite and they do it on their PCs and stuff. And one kind of little hidden gem that I've taken away from all the pieces that he's ordered over the past few months and I've helped him order and pick out stuff is a little device I like to call a computer mouse. If you're looking for a mouse alternative to either play some games or to just, that's comfortable. I mean, it can be used for anything, but the Logitech G502 Hero High Performance Gaming Mouse is well worth the money. It retails for something like 80 bucks and you can get it for, on Amazon right now for $40. Now, some of you are like, I can pay $8.99 at Fred Meyer and pick up a little mouse. Why do I need a $40 mouse? Well, if you get a decent one, they're gonna be 20, 30, 40 bucks. And so if you're gonna spend that amount of money for a decent mouse, you might as well get one that's super comfortable and has a lot of features. Uh, there's a bunch of buttons on it that you can program for various things. Let's say you're in an office environment and you're always copying, pasting stuff. Well, you can assign one button to be the copy button, one to be the paste button. Uh, there's software that comes with it. I believe it's both Mac and PC compatible, PC for sure. Um, and you can even control the little LED lights because it's a gaming mouse and make wow. it more fun. But it's got one of those scroll wheels that just kind of just scrolls just like forever. Uh, anyway, very comfortable, it's very tactile uh, to hold and to use. So if you're looking for a fun mouse that doesn't break the bank, uh, Logitech, and they have uh, many other models of, uh, of this type of gaming mouse, but Logitech is kind of the leader in a lot of these desk type peripherals and products and uh, you could not do much better at that price uh, than the Logitech G502. Yes, yes. A high performance gaming mouse. So it is. Uh, and if you're into the futuristic alien robot look, uh, <laughs> which many gamers are, yes. this, is, this is the product for you. Uh, and that mouse is a wired mouse. But if you have a wireless mouse, or any other device that takes battery. I'm doing a repick this week, and I thought it would be timely with the holiday season. And if you've got new devices or your children have new devices, any of that stuff that needs batteries, I just want to remind people about the Amazon Basics batteries. Uh, I just had to purchase a new 48 pack of double a high performance alkaline batteries 10 year shelf life easy to open value pack uh, i'm not sure how we go through batteries so fast but for 1549 you get a 48 pack of double a and of course they have uh a nine volt whatever you need um but i don't think you can get a much better deal yeah, maybe maybe slightly better. better at Costco. They're Kirkland mm -hmm. brand batteries, yes. but yes, um, not everybody has access to that. And I got to tell you, ordering on Amazon is much more convenient than going into a Costco, especially this time of year when everyone's buying last minute Christmas gifts. Yes, yes. Uh, 
So and I did notice that currently they have a save an extra 20% when you apply this coupon little checkbox. So mm. even cheaper, you get an extra three bucks off. So for 12 bucks, you can get 48 batteries, 10 year shelf life. Yep. Don't worry about it. So we always keep a box of the double A's and the triple A's around uh, so that you're not scrounging around for uh, in your junk drawer for a battery <laughs> that might or might not work. And for those of you who are longtime listeners of the show, you know that we've come across the formula and talked about how Legos cost about 10 cents per piece in a box. And so if you're paying more or less than that, you can kind of tell whether you're getting a deal or getting ripped off. Yeah. Um, same with batteries. If you're paying more than about 25 cents per battery, when you take 48 divided by the whatever, it by the 12 or whatever, it comes out about a quarter a piece. And so if you're 25, 30 cents a battery, if you're paying more than that, you better be getting some high dollar Duracells or something yeah. like that, the pros, uh, Duracell Pro, or they've got another maximum life one I saw on an ad the other day. Yeah. Um, but if it's just standard household batteries, 25 cents, that's, that's what you should be paying. Thanks. Uh, our Amazon purchase, again, we're not uh, disclosing any recent purchases through our affiliate links with the uh, holiday season here and gifts being purchased. So I did want to remind people about the Not Nerd Pick store. And if you get notifications for our tweets or our uh, Facebook page this week, you might have gotten inundated with a lot of notifications because we added a bunch more parts to the store. And I forgot to turn off the thing where it sends out a tweet in Facebook and LinkedIn notification uh, every time something is added. And I did a batch add of, I think, 88 eight products that were previous picks of the week. Uh, so I apologize for that, but I did want to remind people, Wes was asking me, hey, what's some good tech for my in-laws to buy me for Christmas? I don't have any ideas. Talk back and forth. And he was looking through all the picks there and uh, we discussed some things. So um, we're working on getting those in. So we've got about a hundred there now, which means we've probably got about another hundred to go because uh, we haven't done it every episode. Uh, but we're trying to get it organized, get pictures, little descriptions in there to make it easy for you guys to uh, find great stuff that we've picked in the past so you can buy it. And with uh, Christmas coming up, you might have some Amazon gift cards or you might have a new computer or device and you're looking for some new apps. And we've got <laughs> we've got a lot of stuff there. So please go check that out. You just go over to the website and click pick store at the top uh, and you can you can see what we picked in the past. Okay, well, with that, we have talked at you long enough. I'm still a little sore in my core from my Fitness Plus workout. <laughs> uh, we want to wish you guys a, a very Merry Christmas. I hope you had a good Hanukkah. Um, we will be back before the new year with another episode, um, but it's always a joy and we've got some fun stuff in plan for 2021. Uh, thank you always for listening. Now get out there and tech better. What is the deal? Well, what is the deal with when my best Seinfeld? Uh, new toys, gadgets, and other things. <coughs> Sorry, getting emotional. Holidays. <laughs>